We're, we're going to take a little tour in the book of Isaiah. And for those of you who <coughs> are with us here or at home, if you, well, if you have the little Bibles, open it to page 597. Uh, and the rest of you go to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 29. And, 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 and what the Bible is going to discuss and what Isaiah is going to discuss are people who do not understand the things that are within them. I guess the most pressing concern of whatever God is is that human beings do not know themselves and, and do not know the power and the wonder that resides within each one of us. That's the key. And Isaiah addresses that in this beautiful, uh, mystical point that we're at, Isaiah chapter 29. And let's look at verse 9. <coughs> Stay yourselves and wonder. You know, what that's, you, know what that, you know what that says? Stop and take a look at yourself. Stop and take a look at yourself. Take a look at the world that you're in. Take a look at the, the nations that have been used this mag. Take a look and just think for a moment. This magnificently beautiful planet Earth has been used as a dumping ground for all kinds of violence and garbage and hostility. People have been divided up by cults and groups that fight with one another and kill one another. Religions come in, in the name of God, chop people up into little groups and say, our group has the right way, don't associate with this. And so everybody is, is divided by all kinds of casts of suspicion. And when the suspicions get strong enough, then the planes take off from the carriers and the smart bombs come down the chimneys and people start blowing each other to pieces. And all of these horrible things happen. And it says, take, stop and take a look and wonder. Take a look at your beliefs. Take a look at the people who have taught you all the things that you've been taught, all the things that you've listened to all of your life and said, oh, you know, this is my belief, this is my faith. And Isaiah is saying, stop and take a look at yourself. What has your life been? I mean, how happy have you been? In spite of all of the plenty that you live in, surrounded by all of this material stuff, how happy has your life been? How well have you been? You know, and, 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 and just stop for a moment and, and take account of, of what you've listened to. And it may get to a point where you might have to start questioning those who have taught you. You might have to start questioning the very system that you live in. You might have to start even cutting away your allegiances to the things that for so long have been the very foundation of life. Because if you look at that very foundation, you see it's been destructive for the planet Earth and for the people that live on it. And so it says, Stay or stop and take a look at yourself. And then what does it say in the next verse? Cry out. Cry. In other words, wake up. Wake up. Finally, I mean, wake up. You don't owe anything to any group that you must follow anybody. You don't owe an allegiance to any organization that you must say, oh, I'll be a part of you. But yet you feel that you do. You have traditions. Oh, well, you know, my family's always been this way. But it's time, and the Bible says it's time to wake up and stop and cry out and say, what in God's name are we doing to one another? What in God's name have we done to this magnificent planet Earth and the animals? And what, what havoc have we wrecked upon it? And is it right? Right now, as we're sitting here, you've had an education in the last few weeks of seeing in this place where you just went through, no, you, you went through November and you had uh, uh, Thanksgiving and you had a big turkey on your table and you had stuffing and you had booze and everybody sang and you all gathered around and you held hands and we thank God for this blessing and at the same time the television come on and you saw little black children in this remote place somewhere literally walking skeletons with the flesh falling off of the bones dying. And we sat and thanked God for our turkey. And the God who would ever be up there to listen would have to spit down upon your turkey. This isn't the way. And this is what I said last week. And I know people get mad at me. Yeah, that's all right. Because when they do get mad at me, then I know I'm doing my job. And I said, you cannot have allegiances to any country, any organization, if you're a follower of Christ. If you're a follower of Christ, the boundaries must break down, and it is not a Somali child who is starving to death. It is a child. Period. But look what it says in 29.9. Stop yourselves. Wonder. Cry out. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger but not with strong drink. You know what's going on in this world? Do you know why children starve to death? 
Do you know why there are drugs all over the Because people are stoned. They are totally stoned. Have no idea. And that's what the Bible is saying. They sing songs, they come into church, and they sing songs. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. And all oh, they sing, and they got their stained glass windows on the windows so they don't have to see all the crap that's outside. See, they go inside, have stained glass, and they sing, and everybody comes in robes, and they have all the wands and all of this stuff, and they fall down, and they anoint one another and everybody, and they're all saved. And as soon as they get out of this salvation and get home, they are miserable wretches. And they'll pick up a pot and slam you over the head of the crowd. <laughs> no sooner do they get home, put the Bible on the shelf, than all hell breaks loose. Yeah? But they're saved. Because what? It says they stagger, but not under strong drink, because they're staggering. What are they staggering under? They're staggering under the load of their own misery. I hate my job. I don't like living here. I wish I was someplace else. I, every time I hear a plane, I want to get on a damn plane and get out of here. I don't like it. I hate it. And all of this goes on and on and on. Where do you want to go? I don't know. And if you get on a plane and go someplace else, within six months, I hate this damn place. I should have never moved here. Because it's not the plane. It's here. You're carrying the garbage dump with you. And so wherever you set yourself down, the garbage is sure to go. It's like Mary had a little lamb. The garbage will be there. Shakyamuni Buddha said, a lot of people get into meditation, <coughs> and one of the early things they'll say is, hey, things are getting worse. Since I'm meditating, things are worse than they were before. He says they're not worse. He says it's just the fact that you have been living in a cesspool all of your life and now you can gut your sense of smell back. Now you realize the stink you've been living in and you think it's worse. It's the way it always is. But you're aware of the fact that, hey, I shouldn't be living here anymore. Huh? So, I think I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> you don't know what's in this, do you? You think I get this way just from the spirit. Yeah. Boy, that'll make him think. You better, you better. better clear that out. These are cough drops. <laughs> but people are saved. Did you ever notice that? Did you ever go up to them and say, hey, I'm saved. When were you saved? I'm saved. They're miserable, they're sick, they're angry, they're fearful, they're depressed, and they're saved. All at the same time. So what? Why is there so much of that with so much of religion. I mean, they're on television all over the place. Ch evangelists are on television. Preachers are on television. Priests are on television. And they're all over. And, you, and, and if you were to say, OK, Jesus, God, the whole gang up there gave you 2,000 years. You could have religion on all your TVs. And you can have churches on every corner. And you can have all different types of churches. And after 2,000 years, we'll take a look at what's happened. What do you think he would do? Down it would go. It's a disaster. It's an absolute disaster. And yet you live on this planet Earth, which is the most magnificent creation that ever could be. You live on what should be heaven. Everybody wants to go to heaven, huh? but you don't realize heaven is here. Once the inner is changed, then the outer will change with it. And the planet Earth will become the planet heaven when the consciousness of man changes. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to go a place at all. But now let's see what has happened. Look at Isaiah chapter 29, page 597, verse 10. For the Lord has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and has closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, has he covered. So not only are religious people blind, but the religious leaders, the prophets, the seers. You know what a seer is? Somebody who tells the future. They're blind. They don't know the future. Do you want to take a perfect look at one? This guy is a monumental screwball. I call him the Mad Bomber. His name is Reverend Jack Van Impey. <laughs> the Mad Bomber. He comes on television, and he can't wait for Armageddon. 
Oh, it's coming, friends. It's coming. And he's got a wife, Rexella, who has ears down here somewhere. And he says, uh, oh, what do you think, Rexella? Oh, yes, Jack. Yeah, we're building up for a violent battle, Jack. It's coming, Jack. Oh, Rexella, you never... Rexella, the armies are gathering, Rexella, and they're going to be a tremendous holocaust. And one-third of the people are going to be wiped out, Rexella. Oh, yes, Jack, I can't wait. God is coming. Jesus is coming. Hey. What's that? Jesus is coming in a hail of bullets with these people. I mean, come on. Just be, when it says in the Bible, their prophets are blind, could you even conceive there's a God somewhere who will not straighten the whole thing out until he declares a nuclear war on the world? So there's Jack. But see, here's, you know, look. You, you turn the television on, you see somebody as beautiful as Billy Graham. Now, he is a beautiful person, a wonderful person, a gentle, kindly person. But the stuff that he's telling people, it's the literal devil. It's the literal demons. It's all of the oceans splitting apart. And, and everybody gets on a boat. And all of these stories, he's literalized, and he has missed the entire picture because he doesn't understand it. He doesn't understand about the pineal gland of the brain. He doesn't understand about the, the right hemisphere of the brain. He doesn't understand that it, even though Jesus Christ has said, it is within you. The power is within you. The healing power is within you. All of these things that Jesus Christ taught, cast your net to the right side. Take no thought. Search within yourself for the kingdom of God. Billy Graham doesn't know about it. So he'll try to tell you, you got to do this, and you got to be better, and you got to do all of these things and he's a very nice person and they pack him into the place and you know why he packs him into the place because he says to them it's not your fault it's the devil's fault and he says to them the only thing you have to do to be saved is come up here come up the come up will your friends will wait on you come up and you sign a card we'll give you some literature and then you go back and join your friends and that's all you have to do and they come and they sign the literature and they go up into the upper deck and then what happens you know what happens? You know what it says on the back of the bumper sticker? You know what happens? That's what happens. Think about that. <laughs> and what did Jesus Christ say? What did Jesus Christ say about people like this? Let me show you what he said. Go to page 792, Matthew 15, 14. Matthew 15, 14, page 792. And what did Jesus Christ... I mean, I'm quoting Jesus Christ himself. I mean, how... Jesus Christ in Matthew 15, verse 14 says, Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. This comes from the guy who said, the kingdom of God is within you. This comes from the guy who said, if you practice the single eye, your body will fill with light. This comes from the guy who said, cast your neck to the right side. This comes from the guy who said, take no thought. This comes from the guy who said, I am not coming back again. The kingdom does not come in such a way as to be seen, for the kingdom is within you. This comes from the guy who said, my kingdom is not of this world. At that time, you will know I am in the Father, you and me, and I in you. This comes from the guy who is called Lord by Christianity, but who is called, when you apply his, his methods and his regulations and his teachings, called cult, something evil. This comes from Jesus Christ, who says that everything in the... You know what Jesus Christ said? And I want you to take this into the first Christian church you come to. Go in on Sunday morning before you come down here and stop and say, you know what Jesus said? I can do better than him. And do you know what? I do better than him. And you know they'll call the cops or they'll throw you out. Not because what you said was wrong, but because you biblical, but because you have violated their traditions. Now I'll show you something very interesting about that as we go in here. So why does God make them blind? Why would it say here that he has closed their eyes so they can't see? Why, why, are, why are leaders and teachers made blind? Let me show you why. The reason is... All of religion, all of Christianity, all of its teachings come out of the carnal mind. It is the intellectual mind. They never, ever tell you to enter within yourself and separate from the thoughts of the mind. In fact, they tell you that's evil. 
say. And everything they teach comes out of the carnal mind. <coughs> in you, there are two aspects of the mind. There is the carnal mind, which is the 10% on the left side, and there is the right hemisphere of the brain, which is the creative God side. This is the place where the magnificent psychoanalyst Carl Gustav Jung said, God resides. He said, God resides in the right hemisphere of the brain, in the superconsciousness. And so, here if you're told then that, that you must dwell and you must gather your information and your understanding of God at this side. Let me show you something about it, about the carnal mind. Go to page 924 of the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8 and verse 7. And what does Paul say? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, neither can it be. Don't you understand why you have 50,000 different religious denominations all saying they're right? Don't you understand why you have 50,000 different variations of the Bible all saying this is the true, authorized, unabridged version? Those who teach religion teach it from the point of confusion. Thus, the truth cannot be known through the mind. This is why they're made blind. Because if they were aware... Okay. If they were aware of the power within them of the pineal of the right hemisphere, they would start teaching intellectually and they would start combining that which is truth with that which is fiction. Because no person will ever be able to understand this until they first enter into meditation, purge away all of the ego of the mind, and dwell in that which is the Christ consciousness. When that happens, and it happens all automatically, then you will understand the thing. Then you will open that book and understand it. Somebody came to me this morning and said she had all of these things for years, Upanishads and so forth and so on, and she says, now I can understand them. The reason is, when you enter into meditation and obey Jesus Christ, the right hemisphere opens up. Look, let me show you what happened. And I've shown you this a hundred times in a matter. Look, don't you look. In the sky, in the universe, the sun drops down on December the 21st and enters the cross. It's the constellation Crooks, all right? The sun enters. On December the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, the sun is in the bowels of the earth. And so the sun is crucified on December the 21st, the shortest day of the year. It is in the tomb of the earth, December the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And then on December the 25th, the sun is born and rises up to intersect with Aries, the Lamb of God that takes away the cold of the winter and sits at the right hand or the northern hemisphere of the eastern sky and summer comes to the world. The reason that is, is because when you crucify through meditation the five senses, you sit in that which is meditation to become renewed. You are then born again within. You rise up to that which is the Lamb of God, which is the pineal gland of the brain. It casts to the right hemisphere of the brain that energy, and summer comes to your life. That's what the whole thing is. Don't you see? In your abdomen is a place called what? Solar plexus. It's the place of the sun. And when that energy raises itself up to the higher places, that's where healing will come from. When we come next Sunday night and the following Sunday night, we'll talk to you about New Age healing. And I'm told, when I say New Age healing, I don't mean the stuff you see in a magazine. You know, if you get goggles and you play some crazy music in your ears, it'll spin you into nirvana. I'm talking about that which obeys Jesus Christ and enters within and raises itself to the right side. Now, the next verse here that we're going to show you in, in, in Isaiah, back to page 597, is really, I think, is interesting because it shows you what happens today and what happened then. Isaiah chapter, chapter 29, verse 11. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. In other words, no one understands it. How many Bibles do you have? Have you seen sitting on people's uh, pianos and nobody ever looks at it? Because they say, well, I, you know, I can't understand this stuff. You know, I, I don't know if I believe any of this stuff. If the book is sealed. You see, you, you sit and you talk about, you know, oh, there's, 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 there's Noah, and, and he builds an ark, a boat, and he takes two of every animal in the world, and he puts them on this boat. And he and his family get in there, and everybody else gets wiped out, and people believe this literally. Let me be, if I can be the first to say, it never happened. Huh? There is no way that anybody could take two of every animal and put them on a boat. You can't even take two cats and put them in your house that don't know one another. <laughs> Get a cat and bring it in on your other cat 
and you want to see Noah's Ark, you'll see it, all right. That boat would have been blown out its sides. It's a story. It is a metaphysical, mystical story. This is the Ark. Two of everything means the duality of your nature. The creeping, crawling things. You know what part of your nature that is? The wild things. Ah, you know what part of your nature that is? The domestic things. The soaring things, which are the spiritual. And when you take it into the Ark, it says in the Ark there was only one window. It was the ceiling. There's only one place, and that is to look up. And when the Ark is buffeted by all the storms that come against you, it is raised finally, and it deposits you on the mountaintop and you step out over all of your cares, all of the things that tried to destroy you are used actually to raise you up to the mountaintop. That's the ark. But do you know what people are? There are actually people who are climbing Mount Ararat to look for the blasted thing. It never occurred to them that this is metaphysical. It's allegorical. That's what the Apostle Paul said. There wasn't a guy like... Samson and this sexy girl said, if you tell me how, I can make you weak, you know. And, he, and then he said, well, okay, kid, you're cute. So I'll tell you what, get yourself a scissors and snip, snip, and then I'll, okay. And he cut his hair and he lost all of his power. There was no Samson and Delilah. They're words, they're metaphysical words that mean that which is growing out of the higher part of you, which is spirit, if that is cut away by the emotions, which is woman, then you will fall. And so nobody ever, instead of teaching you what these stories mean, you are taught that this is what happened. Actually, it happened. Nobody ever stops to think that it's spiritual. And I'll prove to you, in before we leave here today, I'll prove to you that these things didn't happen. And I'll prove to you that this was all supposed to be taken spiritually, metaphysically. Say. And so what does it say here? Verse 20, no, chapter 29. And the vision of all is become unto the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this. And what does he say? In other words, you take the Bible scripture to your pastor. Uh, I'm having trouble with this particular verse, pastor. Well, some things we just have to take on faith. Did I ever tell you that to you? We take this on faith. We don't question the word of God. <laughs> If the word of God says it, we don't question the word of God. We take it on faith. And I'll tell you, our group feels this way. So you don't know because he doesn't know. This is heavy stuff. I mean, how do you explain? Huh? How do you explain that they take a, a woman and uh, the man who is in this town has two beautiful little daughters? The town is a quaint little village called Sodom and Gomorrah. And this man is visited by two angels, lovely angels. And they come into his house, and the men come outside and say, send out the angels, for we want to have sex with them. Now this is a man of God in there named uh, Lot. Oh, he says, no, I will not send these angels out. They're gods. But here, take my two daughters. <laughs> have them all. Fella, go on, Susie, uh, Penelope, go on out. And, you know, give them their money. So I have a good time. <laughs> How do I know? The Bible told me. It's in the Bible. It's God's chosen people. This is God's inspired divine work. It's in the book. It's in the book. See, no, nobody understands, see, that when the men which represent the aspirations of the lower part of the mind scream at you, scream at you because they want to rip down your spiritual values, which are the angels. You say, no, I will not give up my spiritual values, but I will send out the daughters, which are the desires of the emotions. Because hmm? all of these things mean that. And it all becomes very easy to understand that. And so what happens? What does it say? The learned person does it. Now look at verse 12. And the book delivered to him that is not learned, saying, what does this mean? And he says, I don't understand this stuff. You know, people come to me and say to the Bible, what does this mean? <laughs> and you know what generally most people will do? They'll make up something. They'll make up something. Well, uh, this is what I think it means. You know, oh, yeah, it sounds good. You know what that is? Instead of going into meditation where the physician is, like I've said, the planet Earth is a lunatic aside. And all the patients of the asylum, they go, the patient on ward six goes to ward four and sees another patient and says, 
why do I feel this way? <laughs> and the patient on Ward 4 says, because there's demons in you. Oh, and so the patient goes back to Ward 6 and he tells all the other patients, I know what's wrong with me. There's demons. Who told you? The patient on Ward 4. So we're consulting all of the other nuts to find out why we're like that. And the guy that's telling you this, it's like, you know what they used to do? They used to take women in the Bible, and if they weren't, you know, pure and chaste, and if they had lost their virginity, they would do a gynecological, is that the word? Gynecological examination. Now, I'm telling you this. It's in the Bible. They did a gynecological examination right in the center of town. Is this something for a Saturday afternoon? Hey, big pro football. <laughs> So they do this examination, they did this examination, and get this, if they find out that she's lost her virginity, they call the men of the town to come out and stone her to death. This is God's chosen people. And of course we know that the guy who's throwing the first rock is probably the guy that's caused her to lose that virginity in the first place, you know. <laughs> but anyhow, those are the things, and you have to understand them mystically. You have to understand them spiritually. A little tough here, Joe? Getting a <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, now he's going to the same box. I understand. Now, look. Let's take a look at what the Apostle Paul says about when you read the Scriptures. Always use the Scriptures themselves to confirm. And I have done this for years, and I said, well, I'll challenge any priest, any minister, any pastor anywhere in the world to show me that this stuff is not in the Bible. It is. But it's about time that we open our eyes and begin to understand this precious spiritual stuff. Page 944, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Page 944, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter <coughs> 3 and <coughs> verse, let's go to 14. This is the Apostle Paul talking about people who read the Bible literally, okay? Chapter 3. Verse 14, their minds were blinded, for until this day remains the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. Look at verse 15, even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. They don't see what it is. They don't understand what it is. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now, are you ready for this next one? Who is the Lord? Look at verse 17. Now, the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You are free. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. To quote a famous fella, free at last. When you turn inwardly in meditation to the Spirit, the words about... Look, let me show you something. What, what was Paul talking about? Do you know what this word means? This word here? You know what an allegory is? Do you know an allegory is a symbol? It doesn't mean it's something that happened. It's a symbolic story to point out a deep spiritual message. It doesn't, when somebody tells you an allegory, they're making up a story that will convey a truth to your spirit. Okay? Look at, if you would, somebody yell out, what page is Galatians on in your Bible? Okay? Galatians, page 950. Okay, that'll get you to Galatians. Now go to Galatians chapter 4. Here we have the story of the woman who is supposed to Abraham and Sarah. She's 115 and she's going to have a baby. I mean, if that isn't a cruel trick to play on somebody, you know? But anyhow, Galatians chapter 4. You there? Okay, verse 23, but he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, he of the free woman was by promise. Look at the verse line, next verse rather, which things are an allegory. The apostle Paul said, hey, don't take this literally. God didn't get some old lady pregnant. That's right, folks. God didn't get some old lady pregnant. In order to prove, hey, I'm God. Wait till you see this trick. Hey, yeah, Abraham, you ain't seen that yet. Wait till you see me go to work. Yeah. 
Okay. He didn't get it. It's an allegory. It's a symbolic <coughs> story. It's saying that no matter, you remember what the song said to me? We still have time. No matter how deep or how old or how withered or how barren that center of your spirit is, if you allow the groom, the bridegroom, the Christ to penetrate you and that orgasm of nirvanic ecstasy, there will be placed within you the incorruptible seed, which is the child. That's what it means. That's beautiful. But I mean, Go, and which church will tell you they'll swear up and down the old lady got pregnant. Because they missed it. They're blind. Right? We have a, a TV program, and it's called Hidden Meanings. Hidden Meanings are dark sayings. Do any of you know any dark sayings? You, spit, you use dark sayings all the time. Let's go shoot the ball. That's a dark saying. It's a hidden meaning. You don't shoot a bull. It means you have a conversation. Joan is three sheets to the wind. That's a, that's a hidden meaning. It means, uh, I mean, in the old days, the girl would, uh, she could once in a while do that. But anyway, it means that she's drunk, OK? Uh, Lori shot her mouth off. Now, I mean, that could be a mess. I mean, you could imagine the wall. And it, she, she just come down here with a gun and shot her mouth off. Uh -huh. Here is Joe. Joe, spill the beans. <laughs> Look at the floor. <coughs> and, 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 and as far as Curly, she's just a green kid. <laughs> a vegetable. Now, none of those things mean what I said, right? but you know what every one of them means, because they're dark sayings. And what does the Bible say? Look, go to page 541. You're looking at the book of Proverbs. You go to Proverbs chapter 1. OK? You with me? OK. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2. To know wisdom, to perceive the words of understanding. And now go down to verse 6. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark, dark sayings. Don't take this stuff literally. Understand the dark sayings, just like you understand your own dark sayings. Okay. So no one, people, Prophets, pastors can understand the sealed book. And do you know why they can't understand the sealed book? Huh? No. Let me show you. Go to, go to page 1005 and we're going to see why they can't understand the sealed book. How many of you are familiar with that strange word that you think sometimes you're going to have if you order something with macaroni? Did you ever hear the word kundalini? Huh? Did you ever hear of the energy that raises itself from the base of the spine and goes up the spine and goes through the seven nerve centers of the seven chakras, impacts the pineal gland of the brain and opens the right hemisphere? If you want to look, there's an article in the New York Times about it. It has nothing to do with religion or spirituality. Scientists have found out that the energy must go through those seven chakras too. Huh? I mean, scientists have found out that you must. It's in that thing in the back there. But do you know why the people today cannot read the book? Watch. Go to Pe Revelation. It's the last book of the Bible. Revelation chapter 5. What page is on 1005? Now let's read what this book is. I just told you, okay, the energy must go up the spine, impact of the pineal gland through the seven chakras. Chapter 5, verse 1. And I saw in the right hand, which is the right hemisphere of the brain, of him that sat on the throne, which is the higher mind, a book written where? Within. And on the back side, sealed with seven seals. How do I know? Come on. The Bible told me so. <laughs> Take that one down to the church across the street and show them. Huh? Oh, they'll tell you this is cult. Oh, you're messing with bad stuff. But they don't understand. It's the book of life. And it's in the Bible. So, what do we do? Instead of understanding Armageddon as spirit, see, Armageddon is the fire which comes from the higher realms of consciousness, which is heaven, down to the lower realms to burn up all of those things that have hurt you in your life. All of the sicknesses, all of the depressions, all of the fears, the fire comes down and destroys it all. But what do we have? We got this maniac on television, Van Ippie, saying to everybody, it's going to be a nuclear war, the Russians are going to attack Israel. For what? This is God's work, he says. Instead of understanding hell as the lower consciousness, we're taught of a burning pit where you go for eating a hot dog on Friday. 
I used to believe that. I used to, when I was a kid, I'd go see the ball game, and I'd say, if I eat this hot dog, I'm going to go to hell. Well, I know how to fix that. So I got the hot dog, and I ran under the stands where nobody, God couldn't see me under there. <laughs> but I was only a little kid. And instead of somebody saying, hey, God is nice. God is pussycats and flowers, and God makes people better, and Jesus is peace and love, and everybody gets together and sings Jimmy Buffett songs. That's what God is. Instead of understanding that, I'm told, I'm going to hell because I ate a hot dog. Oh, and this is the foundation of our Judeo-Christian heritage. And we wonder why that's a mess out there. Go to hell for eating a hot dog. Look, you see why? Go back. I'm almost done. But go back to page 597. I'm going to show you what, what God says about this through this magnificent prophet who was a man of the desert and of the east, Isaiah. I want to show you what he says. Page 597, Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 13. Look what he says. <sighs> Where am I here? Uh, for, wherefore, the Lord said, as much as these people draw near me with their mouth, Huh? Praise the Lord. I love Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is going to heal me. As long as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but they have removed their heart far from me. And do you know what your heart is? It's not the pump in your chest. It's the center of your mind. <coughs> And that is off limits to the religious people. And that's where the power is. And I want you to see the next line and let it suck you right in the, you know what. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Huh? You teach little children about a hell and a devil that doesn't exist other than in the consciousness of their own mind. You teach little children about this god of fire and brimstone that's going to come back and burn everybody up. And you got these little kids scared to death. F afraid. And what are they? They're not loving God who is love and who is porpoises and whales and, and, and oceans and beautiful things. They don't know about that. They know this God who is fear and hate and hurt anguish is going to kill people. And that's what we've done. But it says, the fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. <laughs> but this is the, we wrap this up, verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among these people, even a marvelous work in the wonder, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. And the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. They don't understand. I am sitting here, I am standing here, and I am screaming out, and we have on TV, I am saying, Jesus Christ said that of his own self he couldn't do anything, because he did. Jesus Christ said, Kerry, you can do better than him, because he did. Jesus Christ said, hey, I'm not, my kingdom is not of this world. I'm not going to reign. This is no second coming because the kingdom does not come with observation. Because he did. Jesus Christ is the one that said, practice the single eye. Because he did. And Jesus Christ is the one who said, you take away the key of knowledge because you don't enter within yourself. Because he did. And I say that because Jesus Christ taught it. And every one of those things that I have just spoken of here, if you take them into a Christian church, they'll say, it's a cult. Stay away from it. They make good evil and evil good. The pineal gland of the brain is in the center of your brain. And when you are not meditating, it is a sandy consistency. When you start meditating and activating it, it becomes a stone. The pineal stone the third eye, the seat of the soul that secretes melatonin into the body. And I want to show you something that Christianity has totally rejected the stone, totally rejected c concerns about the pineal gland of the brain. Let me show you something. Page 799, Matthew chapter 21. 
I'm almost done. I'm going to run a little bit long, but I'm almost done. Matthew chapter 21. And I want to show you, and this is what Jesus is referring to when he's talking of this stone, because it's Jesus who said practice the single eye. And the single eye is known as the pineal gland or the pineal stone. And Jesus Christ says in Matthew chapter 21, page 799, verse 42, did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the head of the corner. And it is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. The same stone is the head of the corner. It is the capstone of the building. And you see that ancient print that is on the back of a $1 bill. The single eye is the capstone of the pyramid. It wasn't somebody's idea. That's exactly what Jesus Christ was talking about. But we who understand this are called cults. But those who are wise in religion are blind to it. And they have rejected that stone. And they say, hey, who knows? What do they come down? What do they even say? And how could you? What do they tell you? Give us 10% of your money, and you're going to be OK. They're talking about what it says in the Bible is give us that 10%, the left side of the brain, and you're going to be OK. Their counsel is hidden from the secret place of the center. And finally, if you go to Isaiah 29, and this is it. This is the part uh, Al says, where does he get these things? God has baked a cake. Did you ever hear, oh, Waylon Jennings song, MacArthur's Park is, did you ever hear that song? Someone took the cake out in the rain. Huh? God has baked a cake. And the beautiful cake is presented inside. It's called manna. It is within you. And it's sitting on the table inside. And all you have to do in order to get to that cake and to partake of it is do what Jesus Christ said. Seek first the kingdom of God which is within you. Go to the upper room. The cake is yours. But look what, look what it says. Isaiah 29, verse 16. Surely your turnings of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he didn't make me. Or shall the thing framed of him that framed it, he has no understanding. We know best. Follow the Catholic way, follow the Baptist way, follow the Christian way. And all I've ever told you sitting up here is follow the Jesus Christ way. And if you follow the Jesus Christ way, it will lead you in to where the cake is right side up. We've turned it upside down. We've turned all of that which is beautiful into all of that which is ugly. And we've made that which is the most magnificent things. How can you? Sure, sure there are astrologers who have prostituted that, that beautiful. But how can you sit on a planet that, look, look, you're going, here's, your, here's the planet Earth. And there's all stuff all over, shooting this way and shooting that way. And there's planets, and there's constellations, and there's all over the place. And they have an effect on everything. And people, oh, I'm not, I, won't, I, won't, I won't get interested in that, because my church told me not to. <laughs> See? So I say to people, oh, you know, February is going to be a cold month. Oh, I don't get into February. I don't believe. I'm not allowed to believe in February. February is just as important as Aquarius, the new age of Aquarius. This is the age. This is why you're seeing. This is why you're going to see the things you're going to see in 1993 as it continues to generate more and more power. But you can enter within and flow in the harmony of it if you'll obey Jesus Christ and move into this meditation and lift yourself above the thoughts of the mind. As long as you stay bondage to the thoughts of the mind and to the instructions of these people out there, you're going to see a continuation of the chaos in this world and the destruction of this planet. Do you know what Jesus Christ said? He said, wisdom is known by her children. You know what he meant by that? You can see if a thing is right, but how has it come out? Do you think that this world has prospered 2,000 years with these religions killing each other and splitting people up? And call Even the degradation of women, right smack out of the scriptures, not just Christian, all over the world, women are degraded. Why? Because of religion. You know why? The goddesses, the gods of the past were all women. But then you came to the Iron Age, and you know what? We, they start making weapons, and they all became macho. And the gods then became those who, with the swords who could fight their way across the desert. And the women would say, stay home and make socks or make soup or whatever the heck you do, but don't get involved with us. And women was degraded, and women became nothing more than chattel. And it says in the Bible, it says in the Bible, if a woman has a male child, she'll be unclean for seven days. If she has a female child, she'll be unclean for three weeks. It's a direct put down against women. 
but it's not understood properly. It's simply saying that if out of your spirit comes more of the aspects of the mind, okay, the renewed mind, the renewed mind it's talking about, then you will be safe. But if out of your meditation or out of your thoughts come that which is more of that which is the emotions, the lower emotions, you'll be in trouble. You'll be unclean. You have to begin to understand these things that way. So the cake is upside down. And all you have to do in order to right side up is start listening to Jesus Christ in the way that he spoke. Don't allow preachers and teachers to tell you what it meant. Read it in the Bible, see what he said, and practice it. And when you've got the nerve to practice the single eye, you'll fly up to nirvana, and you'll be in unison with the book of life. Thank you very much for sharing this time in the book of Isaiah.